God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. So, um, a lot of stuff happening. Um, I want to, real quick, uh, just ask you, uh, folk, those who are listening, uh, pray for dear brother Todd. His, uh, his son is not doing well. Uh, he's in a hospital. He's in high C right now. And uh, uh, I want to lift him up in prayer. I just want to uh, pray for him right now. Him and his family. Dear, dear sweet brother. He, uh, he's blessed me so much as I've gotten to know him. Uh, when uh, we first came to Minnesota. And then, uh, and then as uh, Leanne was undergoing, you know, we, we've undergone so many trials, and ultimately Leanne's passing. Uh, I feel strongly to mention him publicly, my dear brother Todd. Uh, they're going through a lot right now. Uh, so just Father in heaven, thank you for Todd and his family and, and his son Ian, his adult son Ian, who is not doing well in his ICU. Jesus, I pray healing touch. I pray your will, Holy Spirit, that you would lift him up, Father, as he is undergoing a very difficult time. Lord, we trust you for healing, but we also trust you for your sovereignty because you are doing a great work. And I pray revival in, in the hospital right now as they touch a holy vessel. And that is their son, Ian. Jesus, bless them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, Todd, we love you. We're praying for you. Okay. Uh, who's ready to be ripped apart? Because that's what God wants. I wasn't ready for this, but uh, this message is called Dignity, How to Keep It and How to Lose It. Uh, so God gave me a dream years ago when we were in Ohio, and it has been uh, it has been fermenting. It has been brewing for many years until I shared with Esther the, the dream that I had. And, and as I was sharing, literally the Lord has been uncovering it. And uh, she challenged me about the word dignity. And, and I did some research and I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? What, what do you want to do? And it brought me to a very unusual passage. And I love it how God does this. He, he gives me a word, he gives my wife a word, and he does this, one and the same. To the Amish, go find a Mennonite minister, and the answer is yes. He gives me the word of, let's go to Mark 7. And then Esther said, dignity, and you'll see how he did this. Okay. Uh, dignity, how to keep it and how to lose it. Y'all don't want to miss this. So, Mark 7. So, Jesus, the traditions of the elders, okay? Jesus said... He's addressing the issue of the Pharisees and the scribes. They come to him and they say, why, verse uh, 5, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating bread with ritually unclean hands? And he answered them, Isaiah prophesied correctly about you hypocrites. Now, a hypocrite is one who says one thing and does another. Um, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Me meaning... Uh, Yahweh, God in heaven. They worship me in vain, teaching, teaching us doctrines and commands of men. 
And he says, disregarding the command of God, you keep the tradition of men. He also said, you completely invalidate God's command in order to maintain your tradition. Now, what I'm about to share, this has nothing to do with, oh, we need to keep the commands of God. And yet, This is going to rub some people in Hebrew roots, some people in churchianity, and it's the following. There's good flesh and bad flesh. The bad flesh is your uh, drug using, uh, engorging yourself on food, uh, sexual immorality. Okay. God, I, I pray your blood, Jesus, over this. This is, this is a fearsome thing. In Jesus' name, cover this in Jesus' name. So that which is seen, that's your bad flesh. Folks, let me address something really hard. Your good flesh. And God says, I hate that worse. And I'll explain to you what it is. So verse 17, uh, 15, nothing that goes into a person from the outside can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. I'm not dealing with keeping the commands. If God's giving you a conviction on, against pork, fine, it's between you and the Lord. I'm not dealing with that. I'm not dealing with personal conviction. But what I am dealing with is you telling others that personal conviction on someone else. You should be, not be eating pork and let me tell you how. You should be worshiping on Saturday and let me tell you how. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. Let me tell you why, how. Let me give you all the Bible verses. You should, you should, you should. Stick it, the Pharisees said you should. And they uh, heaped up greater burdens that nobody could carry. Those burdens were on Jesus. He carried them on the cross. Stop telling people what to do. You take them back to the cross of Christ. And you love them as Jesus loved them and poured himself out. And this is a good flesh. He says this. Are you lacking also in understanding? Verse 18. Don't you realize that nothing going into a man from the outside can defile him? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into the stomach and is eliminated. As a result, he made all foods clean. Meaning, it was ritually unaffected. And we're not dealing with pork. We're not dealing with those things. No. They don't affect your heart. They don't affect the violence that's already there from the fall. It doesn't affect your, listen, your evil thoughts. In fact, if you're so concerned, oh shoot, I just had a ham sandwich. That doesn't affect the fact that you're proud. Or shoot, I just put on Nike shoes or bought a pair of Nike and it's dealing with a foreign god, yada. That doesn't affect the fact that you can't seem to get sex out of your head. Or the fact that you are complaining that you don't have enough funds, you don't have enough money, and you don't, you're not happy with your job. Oh, stink. I did work on Shabbat. Well, you know what? Your foolishness is still in your heart. And that doesn't affect how your foolishness is still there. Sin confess, sin confess, sin confess. Do you understand that you, a person keeping, oh shoot, I didn't read my Bible. You know what? You were stingy. For from within, out of people's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual moralities, theft, murder, adultery, greed, evil actions, deceit, promiscuity, stinginess or evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a person. I'll get to dignity as to what that is. Have I made the point clear that in me dwells no good thing? In us dwells no good thing. God, I can't get these stinking thinking out of my head. Yeah, that's from the fall. <laughs> these evil thoughts. So, so and so walked by and your wife is next to you. God, I can't stand the fact that my head always turns and I just had a thought come in and my first thought was, wow, 
that woman is really cute and your wife is next to you. Your wife doesn't know what's going on. But your heart is saying and fermenting these things. But yet you're still concerned whether you read your Bible in the morning or not. But your heart's still screwed up. No amount of Bible reading is going to fix that heart problem. What's dignity? Looked it up. In the Latin, it means worthy. So, on this earth, 1 John 2, 16, he says this. 1 John 2, 16. For everything that belongs to the world, from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of one's lifestyle, it's not from the Father, but, of, but from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does God's will remains forever. So, dignity started from the garden, after the fall. Cain had dignity. I'm worthy, here's my offering, why are you not accepted? He's saying, I'm worthy, God. And God, and here's Abel said, what did, what did Abel say? Did he say, I'm worthy? No, he said, you are worthy. Dignity. Hold on to that. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. Okay, so I had this dream years ago. Just keep in mind what dignity is. So, I had, at the time, a keepa, army, combat, pants, this is my dream, and a black shirt. I was surrounded by a bunch of police officers. They didn't, nobody asked a question, why are you supposed to be there, or who are you? Nobody asked that. They knew I was actually one of them. And I didn't question anything other than what's going on. And the sense was, we are waiting for something to come in so we can take it down. And it was either a car gonna break through the garage door, and I, and I knew the car was coming. It looked like an old 60s Cadillac or something like that, old car. And they were getting ready to take this person down, or this thing, whatever this is. So, and they were sort of setting up almost like trenches, but not like behind seats. And um, you hear scree screeching, and the lights, you saw the lights, it was dark, very much like today, spiritually speaking, very dark. There is light in the world, I understand that. And everybody's like, okay, okay, get position, you know, and I'm, so everybody's on their knees, like waiting. And I'm standing around looking like, what? What in the world? Everybody had, like I saw old shotguns, old, I mean, their weapons, they, they all had weapons and the sense was it was antiquated. The sense was they didn't even know how to use them. I had my sidearm. I was equipped. I knew what to do. And when I'm speaking, it was not just a message for me, but I believe it's for those who follow Christ completely, wholeheartedly. And um, again, it's not just me. So it was a picture. God was trying to tell me a story. And... Um, and there were other leaders of the police officers and they were trying to stop this thing. There was like a door. And you hear a slam into the wall. And they're like real jittery trying to, and then this thing burst through. It, was a, uh, it looked like a black guy. I don't, I'm sorry, that was my dream. So no offense, I, 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 you know, not a respecter of persons. But it um, covered almost like Y'all in Minnesota know about 10 layers of coats, but it was like thick shell. And it was like, oh, 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 oh. 
was just covered head to toe, and he was laughing, mocking, burst through the wall. And everybody was like, they, you know, I'm thinking, why isn't anybody shooting this thing? Why isn't anybody going after this thing, stopping this thing? I'm watching it in, in, in complete incredulity and, um, and disbelief. What in the world is happening? And uh, somebody tried to fire a shot. You could, you could see a shot go off, but they were so like, people actually had shotguns and they're like, they, they, they don't know what to do. The, the, the panic was just tangible. Uh, but I felt at peace and I'm like, what in the world's going on? Somebody tries to shoot, and you, 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 you see it just deflect off this thing's armor. Ping, ping! And he's just, ha, 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 ha. I'm like, whatever. I pull my pistol out, and it looks like a 22. You know, new gun enthusiast, it's a real small bullet. And I aim at the head, and I go, picking, 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 fire three shots. And it goes, ping, 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 dead shot. He looks at me, ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, what do I do? And those of you who have ever played video games, you can see like the little homing mechanism sort of feature. Beep, 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 beep. A, a section of armor, real small, was missing over in his gut. And I l saw it. And the Lord said, right here, and I said, Lord, make it hit. I can't do this. I fired one shot. The bullet seemed to, you know, sort of, and hit, like literally right through the belly button. And it was like, uh, 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 uh. Armor fell off, like, plum, 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 to the floor. And you see this frail old man. I can't remember if he was, if his color changed or whatnot, but just old, wrinkled, and fell on his knees. Ow. He fell on his knees. And I said to him, do you want to pray? And he bowed his head, folded his hands, and I put my hands on him. And I said, let's pray. And there were police still around me, sort of like shocked. And I said, come on, let's pray. They all came down. They fell on their knees. And what I saw looked to be like about a hundred. Come on. And I did this. Come on, let's pray. Then I saw a thousand. Come on, let's pray. Ten thousand. Come on, let's pray. A million. Come on, let's pray. Like you could just see it, concentric circles panning out millions upon millions upon millions. As far as the eye could see. And there was, when I said, I saw two people standing sort of to my side. Come on, let's pray. They lift up their heads, turn, and walk. I literally saw them, like, you could see darkness, like, swallow them up. And I had this sense of dread for those two. And then I said, come on, let's pray. And more people fill their void to, to come and pray. And then I woke up. And I said, Lord, what does all this mean? Think back to dignity. Here's what he said. The Lord literally uh, put the finishing touches this morning. And he's been working over it. And he's been using it as a life lesson for, for years. That thing, if you're ready to receive it, is dignity. It's crept into the church. And the church doesn't know what to do with it. And it's in your heart, it's in my heart, we want to hold on to it. It's pride covered fear. It's the pride of life. I'm worthy. I don't want to uncover. And it's destroying us. It's killing us. You're not worthy. There's no one righteous, no, not one, but Jesus Christ. It's crept in. It's kept us from true revival and fruit. It's been built up. Our weapons are old and antiquated. And the church doesn't know what to do. We either don't know how to use them. 
or we are afraid to. It's the pride of life, and it's evil. You want to know how you stop it? You are not going to hit the head. That's what the Lord showed me years back. Stop trying with these logical arguments. We saw it with certain ministers, quote-unquote ministers. They've tried to reach and impact the mind. It ain't going to work. Stop it. Logical arguments, understandings. Maybe if we just explain it different. You don't need any more explanation than this. You want an explanation? Look at Jesus Christ. You want how he... This is how you keep dignity. You don't open up. Let, I, I'm jumping. This is what the Lord showed me. Not by might nor by power, but by my Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4. I shot in faith. I said, Lord, what do I do? He showed me where. The Spirit is located here. I'm not even going to go into that. But the Lord showed the Spirit is here. In your bowels, it's in the Scripture. Not even going to go into it. It's just in, it's in your bowels. Just, it's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that got us in trouble. And that's here. This is subject to this. Not the other way around. Not stinking thinking. You can't think your This is a data processing center. And whether you choose to follow God or not. This is where the Lord guides you. You're moved in your bowels. Jesus was moved in his compassion. Out of your belly. Shall out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thank you. <coughs> not out of your mind. If you're out of your mind, it's for God. And it better be for God. If you're in your right mind, it's, it's for others. That references John 738. John 7, 38, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Or even in Ezekiel, the third temple, out of the center of the temple, rivers of water that make the dead sea alive. That, that, this is the third temple. Stop looking at Jerusalem. That means that third temple, if it's built, you better be praying because Antichrist is showing up. This is the third temple. So I said, Lord, I thought to hit the head. Sign of great, my thought of the greatest weakness. No, greatest weakness is in the spirit. A man's spirit. I love Proverbs. A man will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? Okay? Lord, where do I shoot? Show me the belly. Okay, Lord. Please make it go where it needs to go. He showed me where, and he took it where it needed to go. And it landed, the shot landed where it needed to go by the Holy Spirit. And it is by the Holy Spirit that it came down, that, that the armor came down. So what's dignity? Pride covered fear. How do you lose it? You get right with Jesus and you look at the cross. Okay. Leanne, in one of the messages uh, a few months ago, she shared how undignified it was to pee all over yourself. And she's experienced that. She was very open with it. And I was, I was humbled by her sharing. When Jesus was in Gethsemane, that was his last potty call. When he went to the cross, from probably 4 or 5 in the morning, it's like about, I don't know, what, 3, 4 in the afternoon? You can't hold your pee that long. What do you think he did? When do you think he had time? Hey, uh, Pharisee, uh, can you give me just, give me a minute. I got to go potty. He peed all over himself. I'm certain of it. And I'm sure he defecated all over himself. And everybody watching. And everybody laughing. And everybody mocking. Can you stand there and say, oh, I got my stink all together? When your Savior didn't, and he said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You want to keep your dignity? That's fine. You won't experience the power of God in your life. I'm going to tell you that right now. You will not experience the power of God in your life. You want to lose it? 
go to Romans 6. I'm going to show you how to lose it. Who wants the power of God in their lives? Me. me. Who wants holiness? Me. me. Let, let, him, let him burn you up. America shall be saved. It was a, it was a quote from Reinhard Bonnke. It originally was, Africa shall be saved, and I believe it will. America shall be saved, and I believe that was my mission that God gave me. The way that it stops, excuse me, the way that it'll happen is if the dignity of America is destroyed. Where, where, um, we stop trying to have our stuff together. Don't be afraid to cry in front of somebody. Don't be afraid to open up. I understand about emotional prostitution. I've, I've been there, I've done that. could probably write a book on it. By the same token, if you have the power of God flowing in you, you shouldn't be afraid of it. We are a laughing stock, but we are also the physical display of Jesus Christ. If you can't physically display Jesus Christ, just then, then stop. Then, then stop believing what you go to your church, do your 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 worship songs, read your Bible, and just call yourself fine. You have religion. You don't have Jesus. You want Jesus? Lay it out there. Get some chutzpah, which is nerve, and take a risk. Pour your heart before someone and say, you know what? I'm willing to get hurt. An infantry, so, uh, an infantryman doesn't say, yeah, I'd love to join the military, but I don't want to go into battle. I might get hurt. I might get shot at. What? Endure your suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy. Or second, I'm not sure. Can't remember right now. You're going to get shot. Folk, you're going to get shot. I know we have some friends that are Amish that are against uh, you know, uh, Amish Mennonite. They uh, don't believe in military and whatnot. I'm sorry. I'm going to offend you. I've offended so many people. Might as well. you got to get shot. Physically, spiritually, you'll get shot. You'd be ready for it. Probably does us some good to be in the military too. Understand the pictures. You like your freedom? Thank you, veteran. To all you veterans out there, thank you so much. I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. You poured out your life. There is no greater love than one who lays down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> Reinhard Bonnke said, America shall be saved. And there's a video. I highly recommend the book. In fact, the, I have the book. And the video is free on YouTube, Raised from the Dead, it's about an hour. The, uh, the case is watertight. And reading the book and the, and the circumstances behind the book make it look like it was utterly impossible for it to happen, but it did. And a man was killed, he's, he's alive now, he was raised from the dead. I mean, he, he hit a concrete pillar, he was in his 30s, Daniel Ekachuku. Him and his wife, uh, Neneta, I think, and uh, and uh, or Neneka, I think her name was, and the Lord gave Reinhardt a confirmation that when this happens, you will know that America shall be saved, and. This man, Daniel Kachuku, who's a pastor, he ran into a concrete pillar, died, went to heaven. He was partially embalmed, and then he went to one uh, someone. His wife carried his body to the basement of a Reinhard Bonnke uh, sermon or crusade function. And Reinhard says, "And you shall rise." And, and they ran up from the basement. And says he's breathing. He's like, I know, everybody's breathing. No, he's breathing. And, and Daniel came back to life. And he was three days dead. And he's alive today. Goes all over the all over Africa, preaching uh, forgiveness. 
the mortician became a Christian. His father became a Christian. Uh, you know, th there was so much that happened. I believe we will see America saved. Not the, I mean, it's the people that make up America. Okay? So, that's what we will see. But it has to start first with the destruction of this thing called dignity. We need risk takers. People who are willing to lose their dignity. I love the Toby Mac song. I need to lose myself to find you. Romans 6, here's, here's where it is. Verse 3. If you call yourself a Christian, if he says, yes, I believe that I got saved, I, 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 I gave my life to Jesus, I got baptized, let me remind you of what the Bible says. If you believe it's true, are you, verse 3, unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Folks, you got baptized, you baptized, with, you got baptized into his death. If that's not true, of, of those who are listening who said, you know, I don't, I don't really believe that, Erez. I, I did get baptized. Yes, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I'm sorry. If you didn't believe that, you need to examine yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, am I saved? Because that's what my Bible says. Romans, uh, going to verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. He doesn't just control your thinking and action. I love Ravenhill. There are those who are dead in sin and those who are dead to sin. Are your thoughts, your heart, your are your hearts constantly thinking good and desiring good, move with compassion? Or do you still struggle with stinking thinking? Your heart is well, how can I please God? You're already pleasing to Him, so stop trying if you're in Jesus. If not, you ain't pleasing to Him. You're either going to please Him by agreeing with when, when God said to Jesus, You are my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. If you believe that, that He is in you, you're pleasing to Him. Stop trying. Because all your efforts are filthy rags. Don't even try. For if we've been joined with Him in the likeness of His death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Has that happened to you? Is the resurrection flowing in you? Jesus says, I'm the resurrection. And if it says, I'm the resurrection, and Christ is in you, you better believe the resurrection is in you. And if it's not in you, you better take a, you better get on your face and say, Jesus, why is the resurrection not in me? Why am I not seeing the resurrection in me? Can you pray? In the name of Jesus, you're healed. Right now, if you, if you have not received healing, I'm going to pray for your healing. In Jesus' name, be healed. So, time to do the will of God. Get out there and go share the gospel. The gospel is the power of God of salvation to all who believe. And I'll preach gospel. There's no gospel. For we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. That good flesh, that dignity, yeah. sorry, folk, that's still self. Jesus died on the cross for that too. Where your heart is always thinking, man, I want, I, you can't seem to get enough intimacy. You can't seem to get enough of that. Some of you have, I, I, Wilkerson coins it, a pornographic refrigerator. Or pornographic television set. Or pornographic YouTube addiction. You keep going to that stupid thing. That stupid idol. Since a person who has died is freed from sin's claim. If we die with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. Because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Guys, death has no longer rules over him. In light of the fact that he died, he died to sin once for all. But in light of the fact that he lives, he lives to God. Guys, you too consider yourselves dead to sin but alive to God. The word there is Logizamai. Consider, Logos word, ma'i, uh, like to be so. Consider, speak it to be so. I'm dead to sin. It's not I, but Christ lives in me. You want to lose dignity? Consider yourself dead to sin. You want to keep it? 
consider yourself alive as if you have any worth. Dignity means worth. News flash, you are not worthy. You have no worth in and of yourself. I am the vine, you are the branches, Jesus says. Apart from me, you can do what? You can do some things. You can do a, a good thing every now and then. No, apart from me, you can do nothing. 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 You're a branch. Those who garden, a branch by itself, you find it on the ground. When you do this, what does it do? It breaks. But if it's alive and it's connected to a tree and you do this, what does it do? It bends. God's trying to bend us. Great revivalist Evan Roberts said, bend us, oh God, bend us. And don't break us like an oak. Bend us like a reed. And thus the Welsh revival of 1905 started. Affecting the world so hard that Kim Sung Un's great, great, great grandfather was a Christian. It became the revival of Pyongyang, Jerusalem of the East, it was called. Folk lose dignity. Look at yourself on that cross. Jesus was there, you're there too. This is the mystery of godliness, Christ in you. Look at the Bible, look at what the gospel says and, says, and, and, and identify, say, Jesus, if I have these issues, it's because you did first. And if, I, if I have inconveniences, you did first with your apostles. Oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long must I bear with you? He was annoyed too. Oh, are you still not believing? Are you still not listening? You parents out there who think your children aren't listening, Jesus had it first with his grown disciples. You gotta go potty and you feel you gotta pee your, pee your pants? Happened to Jesus first. Leanne said when she had her first brain tumor, she says, Lord, I'm thirsty. And God said, I was thirsty first. And she was flooded with peace. Our suffering is not for naught. Guys, you're suffering this investment in heaven. One day, God's going to say, look what you were waiting for. My child, enter into what you have hoped for. Faith, not hope. Faith is, 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 is the, the conviction of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. These three, these three things, uh, I love 1 Corinthians 13, and we'll finish with that. For now we see in a mirror indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. I know in part, but then I will know fully, as I am fully known. Verse 13. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Okay. Prophecies will come to an end, verse 8. Languages will cease. Knowledge will come to an end. Okay. Prophecies will cease. Why? Because it'll all come to pass. Knowledge will end. Why? Because God is the source of all knowledge. Languages will cease. Why? Because in the spirit, there's no need for language. Yeah, you sacred namers. Sorry. English is a, you know English, Hebrew, any other language is a gift for us to communicate with the living God, whose spirit. I'm sorry. He gave the language. I know I'm going to offend just about everybody in the book. I don't care. I'm done. He gave it to you as a grace. The fact that you can actually open your mouth and utter words. I saw my wife when, Leanne, when she was on that bed. Colossal intellect. Highly intelligent. One stroke. Gone. Where's the intellect? Done. She saved. I know she was. Grass withers, a flower fades. It rises, then it burns like a vapor. Your language will end. Stop being concerned over who's right and who's wrong. Take the log out of your own eye and say, Jesus, you're right and I'm not. Make me look like you. That's how you lose dignity. Stop pointing the finger. Start looking at yourself. Go to Jesus. Faith and hope is not the greatest. 
Faith will come to sight. Hope will be materialized. Love always exists. It's time to lose dignity. Lord, here's the, here's, here's the, here's the crux. By the way, the word crux, for you etymologists, crux means cross. It means the central heart of the matter. Even in our language, the cross is central. Here's the crux of the matter. You cannot remove your own dignity. You can't remove your own flesh. Oh Jesus, be our surgeon. Holy Spirit, I, I offer myself up before you. Show me where I'm being so dignified that I can't let you in. Show me where I'm being so full of myself. I'm sorry, folks. You have pride. I'm going to tell you right, that right now. You have pride. Elijah. Mm -hmm. Who in here was born? If you're not born, I don't know where you came from, though. Okay? Who in here is a human being? Sorry, you got pride. Why? Because of Adam and Eve. You have pride. Sorry, you have pride. You have pride. God, show me that I may repent. The pride is so that the armor may fall and I may worship before you. Y'all do have a love language between you and him. Let him love you. He's waiting. Six things the Lord hates. Seven that are abomination to him. A proud heart. Hmm. The first one. Guys, allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate. Get in the Word. Let Jesus Christ and Him crucified be the central theme of your life. And any time you feel like you're off kilter or your, your world is spinning and you don't know what to do, Jesus, take me back to, to Calvary. How are you in this situation? He'll show you. He is faithful like that. And he'll show you. And he'll, oftentimes he'll say the problem's with you. There are times he'll say the problem is with them. But that's okay. Let him talk to you. Stop trying to figure it out. Father in heaven, we love you. And I thank you for this, this message. The end, of, the, the end of the matter is this. Jesus Christ. You were lifted up for us. I'm sorry right now, Lord, for my pride, thinking that I know what to do. Father, forgive me, a sinner. I am saved by your grace. I am a, a saint in the blood of Jesus. And apart from him, I can do nothing. Father, forgive me for any motivation of myself. I'm sorry. Forgive me for where I've done wrong. Father, I need you. We need you. This country needs you. Oh God, 330 million. Don't acknowledge that it is your cross, Jesus, that's, that it is, it is, we are saved by your life. Read Romans 5. We are healed by your stripes. Lord, and the healing that is necessary is our hearts, not necessarily our bodies. I thank you, Jesus, that the most, that the greatest miracle is a cleansed heart. That the greatest miracle of you, Lord Jesus, is that you, holy God, go into an unholy world, take an unholy person, make him holy, put him back in an unholy world, and keep him holy, and make more holy ones because of this person. I thank you for the wonder-working power. The blood of Jesus cleanses away all sin. The blood of Jesus is powerful. Jesus, there's power in the blood. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. In Jesus' name, you are mighty and glorious. The ancient doors are our hearts. Oh God, we lift up these ancient doors. Be open that the King of glory may come in. Jesus, transform us and be in the center of our hearts. And to you who are listening online right now, to you who are watching, if you don't know what I'm talking about, get down right there. 
and, and, and watching and said, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I have lifted up my worth. I thought I was good. I thought I was okay. And I'm not. I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me and transform me and make me your holy vessel. Because you are the potter, I am the clay. Please forgive me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb.